So I have been a little lazy in uh, explaining this warming hole or cold blob as it's referred to by some people. That's because there was a warm blob that was identified here in the northwest, northeast Pacific, northwest North America, uh, which uh, has created a lot of uh, damage to the ecosystem and so on. So I mentioned several times that this is uh, uh, often uh, often blamed on the response of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation to anthropogenic forcing and I mentioned that there are other factors that are blamed as well. So I decided that, remember that the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation basically involves sinking North, North uh, Atlantic deep water formation here, sinking uh, transport down to the south, mixing and then inundating the Indian and Pacific Oceans, coming back as upper surface water uh, across here south of the Atlantic, across the equator back here. So if the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation slows down, then you bring less heat here. So there is this nice paper that actually uh, deconvolved this a little bit to show that this part of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation uh, does not rise beyond the natural variability whereas there are other processes here that uh, are, can be blamed on anthropogenic forcing and are able to create this lack of warming or maybe even a slight cooling. So to quantify this, this is the paper that <coughs> Oops, where is the paper? There, yeah, this is the paper <coughs> that I'm using. Uh, so they define to quantify the uh, warming hole uh, strength throughout the different model configurations. We used the, the AMOC index proposed by Stefan Ramstorff et al. However, we refer to it as the warming hole index to indicate that we use it as a measure of the warming hole strength rather than the AMOC strength. <coughs> Warming hole index uh, is calculated by subtracting the northern hemispheric mean surface temperature TNH from the mean SST anomalies in the warming hole region. So it is the anomalies uh, in this region minus the northern hemisphere. So it gives you a relative strength of the warming hole uh, or lack of cooling uh, with respect to the northern hemisphere warming, which is a good way to think about it. So they basically run models, do sensitivity experiments, uh, perturbing uh, CO2, uh, doing experiments with the full ocean atmosphere dynamics with all the details of the land and so on, uh, plus another experiment where they only uh, use the ocean mixed layer, which is uh, uh, gives you a sense of what can happen if the ocean is responding to the atmospheric changes but it's not doing any dynamic transport like the Atlantic meridional overturning. So that's the easy way to see if actual ocean dynamics and the coupled circulations are needed or if just the thermodynamics of the ocean uh, and the mixed layer physics can uh, do it. There are details on how you do it because if you just prescribe the mixed layer you still have to prescribe the transport of uh, heat that is required based on the equator to pole temperature gradient, <coughs> gradient and so on which I'm not going to get into. So this figure is showing linear surface temperature trends in the North Atlantic for temperature trend 1870 to 2016 of the uh, ISST which is a observed uh, product which gives you a sense of observational estimates of the cooling over here or the warming hole. This is the ensemble mean temperature trend for 1850 to 2005 of the historic ensemble. So there the uh, Simulation is carried out from the industrial revolution, beginning of the industrial revolution to 2005 with all the forcings of anthropogenic greenhouse gases, volcanic forcing, solar activity and so on. And the idea is that the models are reasonably able to estimate the, uh, the cooling or the warming hole. Uh, and the third one is showing ensemble mean temperature trend for 
the first 80 years of a 1% CO2 increase per year ensemble. So here you are not using the observed forcing, but you are simply starting with some baseline CO2 like the pre-industrial value and uh, you are increasing the CO2 in the atmosphere by 1% per year, which ends up being double uh, in 70 years. So you're looking at the first 80 years of this experiment to see what is the impact of warming on the uh, uh, warming hole. Uh, what is the impact of increased CO2 on the warming hole? And you can see that the warming hole is pretty strong just because of CO2 forcing. And here is the ensemble mean temperature trend of the first years of 1% uh, CO2 increase but only mixed layer ocean in which case you don't get the warming hole. That's the main point that I mentioned that if you just have ocean thermodynamics and not the dynamics then you don't get the warming hole which tells you that something about the ocean dynamics is uh, very important. This is just confirming again the mixed layer experiment with uh, one uh, uh, percent CO2 increase. Somebody keeps calling me, don't get the sense to stop calling. Um, and the global mean temperature. So you can see that the full physics uh, gives you uh, the cooling uh, which is consistent with the warming hole index um, from observations uh, versus just the mixed layer physics. That is, uh, uh, level. So low frequency running means are typically done to look for trends com to remove the high frequency variability which is a standard practice. Uh, this is showing in more detail what happens uh, if you have a control run where you don't change the uh, greenhouse gas forcing. Uh, then you make a long simulation and you get basically a what is called internal variability. So whatever solar forcing, volcanic forcing are doing to the system of the coupled climate dynamics and you see that the uh, internal variability produces the AMOC, AMOC strength at 26 north. So it is the meridional, uh, zonal mean meridional transport at 26 north in the Atlantic uh, and it shows some oscillations around zero in terms of the warming hole index in Kelvin but doesn't show any uh, further cooling whereas if you look at the historically forced simulation there is a uh, uh, response and that response is much stronger if you do 1% CO2 or uh, 80 years because in the real system greenhouse gases are increasing but there are other feedbacks as well uh, which are not completely accounted for so you get much stronger cooling uh, if you just focused on 1% CO2 and if you look at the uh, same thing with uh, uh, one percent CO2 experiment for the last 70 years. This is the first uh, 80 years. So there are various simulations uh, compared. But the main point is that to get the cooling you need uh, the uh, greenhouse gas forcing and ocean dynamics. So what about the ocean dynamics? That's very critical. This is where the details come in. It turns out that if you just look at the North Atlantic heat transport changes in the ground ensemble which is uh, models run repeatedly by perturbing some conditions and creating many many simulations the range of solutions from the simulations are indicated by these green shading and the mean of the multiple simulations is shown in the solid line and the dashed line here and these are again ocean heat transports uh, as trends. Okay, this is just the continuous change. Um, evolution of the Atlantic heat transport anomalies relative to the pre-industrial control simulation at 26 uh, 0.25 degree north and 63.75 degree north. We'll see why they are doing two latitudes. They are doing one to the south of the warming hole, one to the north of the warming hole. Uh, in the 1% uh, CO2 experiment, shading represents the 5th and the 95th percentiles of the ensembles. Uh, here is the mean uh, linear trends of the Atlantic Ocean heat transport for the first 80 year in the 1% CO2 ensemble. Um, and uh, the linear trends of the AMOC, gyre components are shown in red and blue. And uh, linear trends of the AMOC are da da da. 
Latitudes chosen in A are those at which strongest positive and negative trends of heat transport occur and thus they separate regions of increased heat convergence and divergence as indicated by the corresponding continuous dashed vertical lines in B and C uh, here. Um, so the main point is that there is a region to the six, uh, uh, heat transport at 63.75 which is positive which means heat is being taken uh, out to the north whereas here it is decreasing at 26.5 because the heat coming in is decreasing so anomalously southward heat transport is happening northward is positive southward is negative in the anomaly sense uh, reduced northward heat transport is negative increased northward heat transport is uh, positive okay so without getting into these uh, divergence convergence calculations uh, by latitude let's just look at this nice schematic here illustrating the drivers of the warming hole uh, AMOC is indicated by red arrows here the uh, Gulf Stream brings in the heat becomes the North Atlantic drift goes off into the uh, North Sea Norwegian Sea here uh, and uh, uh, sinks and recycles and this is the uh, gyre circulation by the blue arrows and cloud feedback so they do some sensitivity experiments to conclude that the northward uh, heat transport uh, out of this region is a critical contributor and is more directly attributable to human impact anthropogenic impacts and associated with that there are reduced uh, shortwave forcing of the region because of the cloud feedbacks which can explain in total the warming hole that exists uh, here. So it's not just the AMOC changes that I mentioned. In fact, the AMOC changes to the south of this domain uh, cannot confidently be attributed to uh, human impacts, whereas these other shortwave feedbacks and the uh, heat transport out of this region seem to be able to explain it uh, better. So here is the relationship of the total advective heat transport at low and high latitudes in the gra grand ensemble. So you can see the total heat transport at 26.25 uh, degree north and total heat transport at 63.75 uh, north. Okay, so the control run is here, 1% CO2 is here, uh, so all this is saying is that the northward heat transport and uh, at the uh, at 26.5 north and at 63.75 uh, north are uh, negatively correlated in the control run and they are positively correlated here in the last 70 years but uh, negatively correlated here in the uh, sorry positively correlated here negatively correlated here and positively correlated here main story ocean dynamics is important but it's not just simply the AMOC it's the transport out uh, to the north that seems to be a big contributor to the warming hole okay just more circulation details and these are important because the general idea that AMOC is doing the warming hole is not uh, completely correct. Okay.